I haven't been on here for a little while. Thought I wanted to jump in here this evening and just talk a little bit more around digestion and in particular stomach acid. And stomach acid is one of those things that I think is really misunderstood and I've got to I've got to clear some things up. Um, and it's, in my opinion, one of the most important things that we actually need to do if we want to start really um, taking care of our health. Now, I was hoping that I was going to be able to share my screen on here, and I don't think you can do it once you've got gone live, which is a little bit annoying. Hmm. Oh, well, we're just going to have to talk. <laughs> I was gonna like I had my I've got a new Wacom tablet and I thought yes I'll be able to like draw and do and I've think I've stuffed it up I think if I was on zoom it would work but because I'm on Facebook live it does not anyway if anyone knows how to do it please let me know uh so what I want to talk about tonight is around stomach acid and stomach acid is really one of the most important things that we uh can do uh, for our digestion and if you've been following me a little while or you've been sort of like starting to really work on your health and work on things um, in the health like improving your health you would would have heard that you, like working on your gut is really important and uh, you can't work on your gut and you can't improve your gut. And if you can hear me as well, please let me know. Please say hello so I know you're watching. Uh, you can't work on your gut without working on stomach acid. And so we are technically one big long tube. So this is still the outside of us. So we have our mouth, we have our esophagus, it goes into our stomach and then into our small intestine and then our large intestine. If we were going to turn ourselves inside out, we would still, it would still be the outside. And this is our first line of defense. We make saliva, it goes into our stomach and our stomach acid is about a pH of about two, which is the same as carb battery acid. It should be really acidic. And so it is actually designed to, our stomach's amazing. The lining of our stomach is is able to withstand this acidity. However, the problem is if our stomach acid starts to rise, so become a little bit more alkaline, like as in it might get a pH of about 3 or 3.5, we actually then start to have issues with breaking our food down. And one of the things that stomach acid will do, it contains... Um, enzymes and it contains hydrochloric acid and it and really is designed to mush our food up unravel protein so proteins are like a big like this like a big ball of wool this is a tape measure and they're designed to like unravel like this so the stomach acid actually helps it unravel so then when it goes into the, the small intestine it gets chopped up by enzymes and then can be broken down so amino acids is the smallest form of a protein and a protein is a whole string of amino acids put together and then it's like blah, 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 and put into a big ball that's basically what they look like and so different proteins have different shapes but they're all like this sort of like complicated mess and so stomach acid actually will help unravel those proteins and then it also allows the release it stimulates the release of bile from our gallbladder which is um, to help emulsify fats. It's also part of our detoxification because a lot of our uh, the, the way that our liver um, excretes is through our digestive tract via the bile, so via the gallbladder, into our small intestine to be excreted. So there's a lot of multifaceted things that have to happen and stomach acid is the big trigger. So bile flow, um, releasing enough enzymes from our stomach uh, from our small intestine so we can break down our carbohydrates, our fats and our proteins to the smallest molecules so they can get absorbed in our small intestine into the bloodstream. And so we need adequate levels of stomach acid. And so with people who um, feel like they have reflux or they're getting a burning and um, they've been told they have reflux, sometimes people can have silent reflux, 
um, or uh, reflux is the most common thing where you put on antacids or PPIs, which is a protein pump inhibitor. Unless you have a stomach ulcer, um, most likely, and even if you do have a stomach ulcer, it's very highly likely that you're not producing enough stomach acid, meaning that it's not actually having too much. What that adequate levels of stomach acid does is it actually allows this sphincter, so we've got this little valve between our esophagus and our stomach to actually, and this is why I had the diagram, but anyway, we'll do it another time. We, had, uh, we have a valve where the pressure from a not adequate levels of stomach acid seals it shut. And if we don't make enough, we actually, this valve becomes loose and even though the pH may be a slightly higher, which is still super acidic, because our stomach can withhold that, like it's, it's designed to stand acidity, it's fine, but it will push back up our esophagus and will start to feel a burn. The other thing that starts to happen is because this is our first line of defense, uh, a lot of the time it's also, to, it's also to keep the bad guys out. So bacterias, chemicals, things like that, so that they are broken down and not allowed to be absorbed into the bloodstream, particularly pathogenic, um, you know, bacteria and viruses is stomach acids really important. And so if we don't have sufficient levels of stomach acid, we'll also start to let things in. So if we're not having this cocktail of not breaking our food down properly and letting in the not so helpful um, bacteria, it goes into our small intestine and there's this combination of our ecosystem in our large intestine where most of our bacteria lives as well as us not making enough stomach acid and those valves between the small intestine, the top end and the bottom out end being leaky. And what also happens is that bacteria over time when there's this imbalance in the large intestine and those valves aren't sealed shut very tightly. They're not working as well for a various number of reasons. Things can often start to travel upstream and hang out in the small intestine in the upper tract where they shouldn't. So the type of bacteria that we have in the upper tract of our intestine and in the middle part is only a couple hundred different types of species, whereas in the large intestine is millions. So there's very variation. And so we shouldn't have the same bacteria. This types of bacteria that lives in the small intestine is very different to the stuff that lives in the large intestine. It's a different ecosystem. And it's a little bit like um, when a foreign animal is introduced to another country, such as in Australia, like foxes or cane toads, it, it actually dramatically disturbs the ecosystem. And so humans, like, <laughs> so it, which is true, right? So uh, uh, white humans, um, the, the, the ecosystem completely changes. And so with that, that's like saying, okay, well, we've had these foreign animals that have come upstream and it starts to change it. And so what happens is we're not breaking our food down properly. And a lot of the time, this, these bacteria has gone upstream and this bacteria is having a bit of a party on carbohydrate that hasn't been broken down properly and it will produce a gas and the gas will either push back up through our stomach and through that top valve and then create reflux or will create, create bloating and gas. Now, this is not the only reason. People can be non-symptomatic with, and this is called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Anyone with any type of digestive symptoms needs to increase stomach acid. Anyone with any type of other issue needs to usually increase stomach acid because I can look at people's gut and also look at what other symptoms they're presenting with and can tell that the gut is quite inflamed. And the first thing that you need to do if you're actually going to get that real good solid foundation um, with our gut is to actually really work on increasing that stomach acid. It's really, 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 really important. And the other important factor with this is to really understand the role that our vagus nerve plays in this. So when we're talking about stress, I talk about stress a lot. Stress is the big elephant in the room with any health condition. Our vagus nerve is that nerve that goes from our brain to all our organs 
and actually is our rest and digest. So when we are in a state of relaxed and feeling safe and a sense of safety, we feel calm, we will digest our food. In other words, our parasympathetic nervous system is switched on. When we are in a state of fight or flight, where we are in alarm, we don't feel safe in our own bodies. It's background alarm or foreground alarm. So you might know that you're stressed or you might be running on, on constantly on that, including things that may increase your stress hormones, such as sugar, coffee, um, uh, other stimulants that we're surrounded by all the time. Uh, this can actually cause, and coffee is a big one, this can cause our nervous system to be in alarm. And we will not, uh, when we're in that stress state, that state of alarm, we would not digest our food properly. We will not produce enough um, stomach acid secretions. We will not make enough enzymes we will not, because that vagus nerve is switched off because blood flow is actually taken away from our digestive system when we're in a state of alarm, when there's cortisol, when there's adrenaline, but flowing through our bloodstream at higher levels than what is a healthy range, we will we will not digest our food properly, right? If you're not present, if you're not eating your food like presently, you're eating on the run, you will not digest your food properly. Now, guilty as charged, right? We've all done it. We're, many people do it all the time. But it's really important to know when you're working on your health, if you want to really absorb the nutrients that you're even eating, if you're spending money on good food, like nutritious food, you might not be absorbing it because you actually don't have enough, not making enough stomach acid secretions. This is really important. And so a lot of people don't realize this is one of the first things that I address usually with people when I'm working with them because I'm like, if we do not get on top of that, then it's very hard to get on the rest of everything. Now, how do we do this? First of all, I address the nervous system. So I do a lot of nervous system work with people in the program and the container I work with when I work with people. A lot of it is around nervous system regulation and helping people or teaching people to feel more safe in their own bodies to able to stimulate and stitch, switch on that vagus nerve so that they can digest their food. And what I find is when I look at it through the lens of the nervous system is if we don't first feel safe in our own bodies, we don't know how to get into our own bodies. A lot of the time we're up in our head, letting the chatter go, and we're in that constant state of being hypervigilant, or shutting down and not being able to like procrastination, freezing, we are in alarm. Now that alarm often comes from I'm not from from old wounds, traumas, experiences that we had when we were younger that um, put us into this state. And our our response when we when things happen in our everyday life is to go back into that. If we have wounds that we have not healed, we will go back into that nervous system response. And so, first of all, having tools to get into your body, learning how to get into your body, knowing what to do to get into your body is really, really important. The first thing I give people, I'll give you one tool. One of the first things, actually the first, one of the first things I give people when I work with them is giving, having a sigh breath. And the sigh breath is this physiological, physical sigh to actually get you into your body. And what that does is it stimulates the vagus nerve and helps you feel safe, right? And what that looks like is big breath in through your nose, expanding the belly and then filling up into the chest and then letting out the sigh with a noise, like a, ah. You only need to do that a couple of times. Now, what that does is that noise, that noise switches on your parasympathetic nervous, it's nervous system because it stimulates the vagus nerve. Vagus nerve goes from here all the way down. And so that's really important. Number one, get into your body when you eat. The other thing you can do is start to do really simple things like add in bitters to your diet, um, lemon water, bit of food. Um, taking some digestive enzymes is really helpful as well. Uh, this is, and this is where the nuances of you know, figuring out what's right for you is really important, not just going out and say, like spraying everything, but look, having someone look at what's important for you 
and what you specifically need but adding in bitters into your diet is really important apple cider vinegar lemon and warm water doing that you know in the morning um, 15 20 minutes before you eat using digestive enzymes as an aid to increase your stomach acid but making sure that you've got the right digestive enzymes with things in there that are going to help naturally increase the production of your own um, stomach acid secretions as well as help you break your food down which is enzymes and so as we age we do naturally start to reduce the amount of stomach acid that we do produce naturally over time but stress makes that worse and so there's a bit of a catch-22 because there's also vitamins that also we need and minerals that we need to actually make um, sufficient stomach acid the b12 and zinc are two and so if we don't have sufficient levels of them when i'm talking as well about sufficient levels i'm talking about do we have optimal levels not just okay i'm on the range and here's the problem the ranges often are so big that you could be on the outside very far lower end of the range which in my my opinion would be deficient and you, if you went to the gp they would test you and you'd be like oh yeah your bloods are fine because the range is so big and guess why the range is so big because they're testing so many hey 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 stop um they're testing so many people that are unwell that they the ranges are really big so there's someone on the other side of my door on the other side of the wall um so this is really important all right and then stop stop the joys of doing facebook live and so this is really important so doing um and i've lost my train of thought oh my god <laughs> bitters bitters foods enzymes ugh. anyway you're also also making sure that you're being present with your food like really eating your food well sitting down and eating your food breathing before you eat your food really enjoying your food there's many many things there's a couple of things that you start implementing will make a big difference. Um, if people react to um, apple cider vinegar, sometimes that can indicate SIBO. Uh, people will often um, don't realize they've had SIBO. I've had so many people like, you know, come to me in 10 out of 10 pain, don't realize that they've got a SIBO issue, issue and we go and test for SIBO and we're like, okay, we've got SIBO, we change the diet and the pain goes away. It can be liberating once you give yourself that freedom, right? And it can be, it can turn around pretty quickly. So if what I have said resonates or you're going, you're experiencing any of those problems, reflux, um, stress, um, not digesting your food properly, poor energy. Oh, I know what I was talking about before. So the vitamins and minerals. So we need zinc and we need B12. And so it's like, which came first, the chicken or the egg? If we don't have the right amount of minerals, we won't be able to make adequate levels of stomach acid. And if we don't have levels of stomach acid, we won't be able to absorb our food. And this is where we need aid and we need testing and functional testing to know what's going on. And this is where supplement, supplementation to address those deficiencies comes in really important to get our stomach acid back properly. If you don't get your stomach acid working sufficiently and making enough, you will be hitting your head against a brick wall in terms of trying to heal your gut. You will not like, and, and it comes also to your diet and improving your diet and, and all of those aspects, really working on your nervous system. There's many aspects to this, but the stomach acid is the most important thing. So if that resonates, um, if you've got any questions, please let me know. Please reach out if you've got any other questions as well or pop in the chat. Um, and if you do want to, I'll just pop in the chat below, if you do want to continue this conversation and you feel like, yeah, what I'm describing is me and you're like, yeah, I, I, I'm having these issues and I don't know what to do and I don't know how to fix it, please reach out. I, have, I, I do a, a 20 minute free health assessment um, with anyone that's interested in working with me and really that's just a conversation to look at what's going on for you really understand what's um, happening where you're at where you would like to go and if i would be the right person to be able to help you um, on that journey and if not i can at least point you in the right direction so there's you know like you know then you at least you know okay what's my next step what's my next action step in this and if you are then i can i can explain a little bit more about the process and how i work and how that looks um and 
it's it's pretty uh, pretty simple and straightforward to the next step. So uh, yeah, I hope you have a beautiful evening. I will chat to you all soon, and please reach out if you have any questions. Okay, ciao.